Hello and welcome back to round two of Wednesday Night Standard Game Swap in Autumnal Mason, Ohio. <laughs> is that even a word? Autumny. Autumny. I, I think I, I think that autumnal autumnal is a is a word. I think it is. I think it is. Yeah. Um, either way, uh, that's the word that I'm using. <laughs> 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 so on the left we have uh, Jesse Sinopoli. I, I don't. There's multiple ways to pronounce that, that gonna, one as well. I'm going to call him Jesse Italian. Je <laughs> hey. <laughs> Jesse Meatball. No, that's just, that's that's really, really not appropriate <laughs> or politically correct these days. Yeah, so Jesse. Yep. Playing Mono Red. Yep. And on the right, we have Clayton Cardinal playing Sultai Midrange, not Sultai Energy. Okay. So we're going to see what the differences are. I bet the difference is main deck Braska. And we're going to see if those differences help in this matchup. Absolutely. Although I do see Long Tusk Cub and Botanical Sanctum. Um, okay. And I see an Attune with Aether. All right. So I, I guess it is energy-based, but not... Not as uh, energy based as energy based. Okay. It is. So not the list that we saw. I'm assuming from the SCG. Sure. Was that list playing Bristling Hydra? It was playing Bristling Hydra. Oh no, it was not playing Bristling Hydra. Right. Excuse me. Okay. Which I think you and I have slightly discussed. <laughs> if I'm playing energy, I'm playing Bristling Hydra. Yeah, that's <laughs> like one of the biggest incentives to play the energy pack. Exactly. You ever seen that? You ever seen what that card does to uh, decks full of targeted removal? No, because those decks usually scoop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. <laughs> They're like, oh, I can't beat that card. Yeah. You are correct, sir. You cannot beat it. Yeah. And uh, another interesting thing. So, uh, yeah, the player's playing fast and loose here. Okay. Um, so. With the, Clayton with the Fatal Push. Uh, Jesse with the main phase lightning strike to trigger prowess. Get in with the Soul Scar Mage. Clayton Fatal Pushes. And only ends up taking three. Gotcha. Okay. All right. And um, interesting from Clayton here, instead of tapping his two swamps, I'm, I'm assuming he's holding up a fatal push. Mm -hmm. But um, that does nothing against, um, you know. Well, at least representing. Uh, representing it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but. Would you be more inclined to represent that as uh, against a three drop as opposed to a um, a... Blossoming defense? Even if you don't play it. Fair. Um, that is a good question. I think... Wow, that's actually a really good question. Uh, I think it depends how you're valuing the Glint Sleeve Siphoner. Okay. Notably, Clayton did leave uh, green up here, although didn't have a choice. Yeah. Um, but... If I was going to look for a threat to protect, mm -hmm. I think I'd be much more excited about protecting that gift today than one. I would as well. I I, I view Glint Sleeve Siphoner a lot less positively in the Mono Red vet matchup mm -hmm. because of the life loss. Mm -hmm. I would venture to say I, I generally trade it off. Cool. Well, sure. Clayton disagrees. Um and was willing to spend the life in the upkeep to draw the card. Okay. That could come back to haunt him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, both of his creatures dying here. And the reason Jesse is spending all of this, you know, all of this mana to kill his creatures mm -hmm. and all these cards, he has Hazard in his hand. I think, yeah, I think we're definitely going to see that, that one point of life make a bit of a difference here. Yeah. I think I think that might happen. Um, and I, I believe Clayton has he has Liliana, Death Majesty in his hand, okay. and he's going to cast her. He's going to get back that Gifted Aetherborn. <sighs> See, I don't like that as much because he has on on crop Crasher. Right. So, what? Well, well, and I, I, it looks like Jesse has a Hazret and another Lightning Strike in his hand. So, not able to play that Hazret and cash it in. He's going to take out that. Uh, on crop crasher and I kill that and still don't know yeah well i don't know i mean i guess because of the lifelink we just have to kill that yeah absolutely yeah. um so jesse tossing the lightning strike at clayton's yep. head there Ooh, down to six yep getting in and unless clayton has a nebraska's contempt yeah this uh 
It's going to be over quick. Is, oh, all right. Well, there it is. There you go. Main Gains thing. two. Yeah. Back up to eight. We're playing some magic. All right. We're in it. All right. And if I'm Jesse, I'm worried. I'm. Well, Jesse lamenting his inability to draw a second hazard there. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like, I don't think I like playing that mountain because you can have an hazard activation. Sure. Um, I think I would rather hold that onto that and, you know, lightning strike at the end of turn. Clinton's going to put Jesse down to eight here. The heat is on. The heat is on. Oh, Scarab God? Uh, wow. Uh, that's probably going to be about all she wrote. Uh, that's probably about all she wrote. Yeah. <laughs> You're probably correct here. Yeah. So, uh, interestingly... A situation where scavenger grounds showing showing its its uh, relevance absolutely and then against the Liliana Death's Majesty deck, but uh, not still its, still not its relevance against ten power on the board. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Scarab God is still a five five for right. five. Uh huh. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Just happens to be a five five for five, and have a bunch of ridiculous abilities. Yeah. An instant speed reanimate. Instant speed reanimate. Inst instant speed. Right. Making the creatures. Right. Four force. <laughs> right. So how many other instant speed reanimation spells or abilities has there been in the history of Magic the Gathering? Ooh. Necromancy? Uh is it instant? Okay, you that's can, instant. You can play yeah. it as an instant. Uh okay. sacrifice the creature at the end of the turn, but uh, yeah. Gorio's Vengeance. Gorio's Vengeance. All that right. that yeah. one's kinda busted. Yeah. <laughs> a card that a card that can be ridiculous in the modern format. And then um, what's that? The uh, the return from the Nether regions. <laughs> <sighs> something along those yeah, lines. Yeah, yeah. There's the um, something dance that you can buy back and return something at instant Corpse speed. Corpse dance. Corpse dance. There yeah. we go. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. sure that was played and constructed when it was in right. standard. Okay. So these, but importantly, uh, these are all cards that belong squarely in eternal formats. Yeah. Exactly. Squarely. Yeah. Right. Um, so, so what they've done is they've printed a five-five for five mm -hmm. uh, that you have to exile to for it to, you know, be permanently dead. Absolutely. And they've tacked on an ability that is of roughly equivalent power level to cards that belong in eternal formats. <laughs> Just you know, for the bonus. Oh, and by the way, by the way, every upkeep you get to scry and dome your opponent for the number of zombies you can Yes, you do. Yeah. Yeah, so why not? I mean, it's the Jace the Mind Sculptor of creatures. I am... All right, so a little background about me. Mm -hmm. I do play Legacy. Mm -hmm. I do enjoy a good Legacy tournament. Mm -hmm. I do, too. I think Legacy is a fantastic format. I think it is the magic format where the best player is the is most likely to win. Absolutely. And I'm going to tell you what deck I generally play in that format. Can you take a guess? Uh, Reanimator. No, uh, dredge. Uh, you were close with reanimator, though. Yeah, I, I don't. I play. And you're you're going off the beaten path by saying I play the decks that uh, play unfair games. I play the most fair game. What's the most fair game? Lands. No, <laughs> I should play Nick Fit. Why would you do that to yourself? I love Nick Fit. Why would you do that to yourself? Love it. Don't like it. Love it. I love that type of deck where you can just grind people. You literally grind people down. Yeah, well, as a longtime smoker, much to my chagrin, I can tell you Nick Fits are no fun. <laughs> <laughs> Not something that I would actively choose to engage in. Uh, all right. Well, <laughs> and the reason I say that is because Scarab God, I've been playing Bug Nick Fit. Uh -huh. I... I think that has a place in that type you, of deck. You are. <laughs> this is, that's a bold statement. Sarah. I know, right? I mean, when well, you're you're talking about like a, f a five mana creature that can just get swords to plowshares. Absolutely. With w for one. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm playing. I'm playing such eternal staple formats as Thrag Tusk in this deck. You are a madman. <laughs> An actual madman. Uh, and I'm, Grave Titan, uh, too. Someone come save me. I'm sitting next to a crazy person. <laughs> so, back to the action. Jesse on the play. No one drops. Nope. No one drops. And it's uh, a shock. Maybe he's oh, going... Oh, so we're just, we're just going face. We're he play, is. We are playing modern burn. And he is going on this mid-rangey plan with the rampaging Ferocidons, mm -hmm. Chandras, Hazarets, and the Glorybringers. And a harsh mentor. Against this type of deck. It's just going to get fatally pushed off the balcony. And you know what? I, I won't say that I dislike it. Because he's not... 
I don't foresee him doing much else mm-hmm. in this matchup. I don't missing land drops. He's I see him doing that. Yeah, I see him doing that as well. All right. So Clayton with a clutch attune to Aether here. But forced to grab a swamp um when it appears as though he has some blue cards in his hand. Yeah. So eh. Eh. I like playing the rampaging frost down right here. Yeah. yeah. I actually really like this card right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's not pick it hasn't picked up a lot of steam yet. The fact that it's symmetrical though, however, came back to haunt uh the gentleman in the finals of the war- of world Javier Dominguez. Ha- Javier Dominguez, yeah, the fact mm-hmm. that it's symmetrical. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, taking I, relevant points of damage from his own creature. I think it was more so taking the relevant points of damage from his land though that kind of hurt him. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair. <laughs> Yeah, and um, if I recall correctly, he mistapped in a couple sp- spots there as well. Yeah, he did. And again, that goes back to, right. um, you know, you played two ruling. Grueling. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Right. And I, I can tell you, um, the very first SCG Invitational that I went to, mm-hmm. uh, it was during the Mono Black Devotion days. Yeah. And, and I was fortunate to make day two. Mm-hmm. I played eight rounds of standard. Yep. Seven of those rounds were Black Devotion mirror matches, uh, oh. uh, different variants. I, yes. Right. I was on uh, Black Green because I enjoyed Abrupt Decay's ability to answer your opponent's Underworld connections. Yep. I, I thought that was very important. I thought... Oh, and Guard Charm, too. Right. Different. Yeah, Yeah. That, that as well. But I thought the ability to do that uh, was more important than having access to Blood Baron of Viscopa. Mm-hmm. Also... The green splash still played Grey Merchant of Asphodel, which I I liked that card quite a bit. Yeah, the absolutely. the versions with Blood Baron did not. <laughs> the Invitational I went to the the uh, the first one I went to was um, it was Jund, right? Jund in the format, and they, that was when uh-huh. they split it up into two. You played Legacy and yeah, yeah, you yeah. played the two formats. Yeah. So th- that's that's what was happening. It was it was four rounds of standard day one f- uh, and four rounds of Legacy. Yeah. Um, and then the same on day two. What would you play in Legacy? Uh, I was playing Legacy Jund at that point. Ah. Uh, it was all I could afford, to ah. be honest. Um, although I was fortunate enough to own a copy of Chains of Mephistopheles, which I probably could have sold and built a better deck. But that's beside <laughs> the point. Um, no, you know, it, it, I was also at, at a point where I was trying to build Jund and Modern, and so a lot of my, my financial resources were stretched, Yeah, you know, toward that archetype. Okay. Um, given the opportunity to play that tournament again, I absolutely would have played Esper Stoneblade, or Esper Deathblade. Yeah. Running away, no, no questions asked. That's what I would have played for that. Yeah. But th- the point that I was trying to make is that that was two days of competition against players who are not the best in the world. Certainly good players. Yeah. Certainly good players. Absolutely. Uh, multi- multi-time Pro Tour competitors, uh, SCG champions, mm-hmm. SCG top eight competitors, et-, et cetera, et cetera. Not the 24 best players in the world. No, absolutely not. And I can tell you, after that eighth round of standard and, p- and playing s- this the seventh you know, Black Devotion variant Mirror, mm-hmm. I was done. Yeah. Now, my record was such that I wasn't competing for top eight, but I was still competing for, for money. Mm-hmm. I didn't care. It, I was cooked. I was so gassed. Yeah. And that's, that's you know, that. It's still stiff competition. You're still playing a very hard game in Magic the Gathering. Right. And it, you're playing, you know, for 10 plus hours a day. Right. No, oh no! There's a glory bringer. Yeah, and is it going to bring the glory? It it might. Yeah, I uh, big fan of that card. I am too. Yeah, and we were actually discussing this earlier: glory bringer versus hostage taker. Yeah. Now we're now we're seeing it. I I do like not exerting there too. The I agree. Ho- the hostage taker is already out there on the battlefield. Yeah. There's right. n- no need to remove it. Right. We're ahead in the race. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, what are we doing? Ooh, we are, we're gonna bounce it and make him discard it. With consign into oblivion, so f- seven mana recoil. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, we don't get to play recoil. <laughs> I did get to play recoil. I know you did. I got to play recoil, undermine, factor fiction, and nether spirit in the same deck. Don't. It, uh, it was glorious. Correct me if I'm wrong. That was the first format that Wizards had produced for drafting to be like actually a mainstay. Like it, it was an actual format where you could draft. Like Apocalypse was that like where they were like, yeah, we're gonna actually make this with drafting in mind. Invasion. Invasion. That's invasion what it was. Invasion block. Yeah. 
Um, well, so, and we'll get to that. Jesse taking game two there on the back of just having better threats. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Clayton, multiple answers. Uh, didn't matter. Jesse, multiple threats and burn. Yep. Okay, so, um, I honestly don't remember. I feel like that it happened earlier than that. Okay. Um, I, I do know that Tempest... Stronghold Exodus came before Invasion Block, mm -hmm. and I do recall actively drafting Tempest, Tempest Block. Yeah. Um, I do recall Five Color Green being the favorite uh, archetype in, okay. in that draft format. Uh, I, I recall that being an established thing. I recall there being commentary uh, uh, throughout articles and whatnot okay. on that dynamic, so I'm inclined to believe that it happened, happened a little bit earlier yeah, than that. That it happened before, or that. maybe it was just that invasion block was widely known as a a very like a favorite uh, draft block for some players. The mana was really good. Yeah, uh, kicker cards were awesome. Yeah, there was a lot of play. Yeah, you know that sort of thing. Multicolored cards like with recoil and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. indeed, indeed, and uh, yeah. So that that could have been when when draft you know really kind of started to take off as a format. Mm -hmm. You know, amongst the Magic community at large. I can tell you that at that time. I was almost exclusively interested in constructed. Okay, um, that was at a point in time when the Pro Tour was was single format. Oh, so you knew you were going to a limited Pro Tour. Okay, or a limited um, or a, or a constructed Pro Tour. Okay, you, you were if that was what you were trying to accomplish in the game, mm. you were not forced to focus on both aspects of your game. Okay, um, and so at that point in time. I was interested in competing in constructed events and trying to qualify for constructed pro tours. Okay. So that's what I chose to specialize in. All right. And Clayton going to attune with Aether on turn one, grab a swamp. And Jesse on the back end does not have a mountain. He plays a Ramanap Ruins as his main red source. And I believe I've seen this before right. from a one Javier Dominguez. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, can be, this, can, this can definitely prove to be an issue as yeah. the game goes on. Absolutely. Uh, Slifer the Canadian asking, are there any dinosaur decks at this event? I am looking over the list, and I'm sorry to disappoint, but it doesn't appear so. There is one list labeled Jund, uh, which may include some cards like Ripjaw Raptor and Regisaur Alpha, but uh, as as it stands, there are no dedicated dinosaur lists uh, here tonight, and I think that speaks to where dinosaurs actually sit in, in standard as as mm -hmm. a format right now. Yeah, um, dinosaur is able to produce some very very impressive threats, also not able to beat its own deck. And what I mean by that is the Removal options available to a deck like Dinosaurs are not good enough to ke to keep it positioned well against the other top decks in the format, um, despite the fact that it can produce some very powerful threats. I can tell you that I tested, when, when this came out on Magic Online, I tested a red-green... Um Red green dinosaurs deck. Sure, and it should. It looks like it should just be hot fire. And it it did have really good draws, and even its semi okay draws were fine. That wasn't the issue with the deck. The issue with the deck is you need to be able to interact in the standard format with mm -hmm. decks such as Approach to the Second Sun. Mm -hmm. That deck absolutely just crushed me. Oh yeah, blue black control. <laughs> yeah, even yeah. you you would have draws where you'd crush it. Even then, right. some of your mid range draws not good against that type of deck. Right, exactly. And and that's the thing about about the decks that have thus far establish themselves in the format. Um, most of Red's removal can go to the face, uh, or it does something else, like yeah. Braid. Yeah. Right? Um, Black gets Fatal Push, probably the best removal spell in the format, and Vraska's Contempt is a backup. Uh, the, and those, those two colors, Black and Red, form the foundations of the three arguably, well, I mean, you'd have a hard time arguing against, yeah. the three best decks in the format. Blue Black Control, Teamer Energy, and Mono Red. Yep. Uh, all of those decks playing either Black or Red. Yep. And and that is because of the quality of threats in the format necessitate a roughly equivalent quality of answers. Yeah. 
and the quality of the answer is generally being either Fatal Push or Harness Lightning. Right. Or removal that does something other than be removal. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so it looks like Jesse's got a couple of on-crop crashers out. Um, he did play a third, and Clayton quick yeah. to slam down an Essence Extraction. And okay. And, you know, I, I really like Essence Extraction's position in the format right now as well. I do as well. Um, Mono Red, uh, with its ability to go long, can pressure life totals despite a fact... This, despite the fact that the game is going long. Yeah. And so these little incidental life gain things, like Essence Extraction, like the two life tacked on to Vraska's Contempt, mm -hmm. very relevant. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't like Jesse's position right here, but I do like that trade. I think he needs to try to... Sure. He has a handful of two drops and four and a four and five drop in Hazret and Glorybringer. Yeah. He, he just needs to survive. Desperate for a mill. And he's really... <laughs> the funny thing is, he's ahead on cards, but that... That yeah, that red source is really you know, uh -huh. he is actually at seven, by the way. But he really just needs to find something here. You know, some lands. He needs back to back mountains. Yeah, and then I would Big say time. I would say he's um, he's ahead in this game on resource management at least. Sure, I mean, but th that's a big ask. I yeah, know, I know we're playing. You know, a, a a good number of mountains in these mono red decks. Yep, um, but still. I mean, runner, runner, mountain. At this point, he's got. Let's see. So we're assuming four Sunscorch, four Ramanap, probably two Scavenger Grounds. So right there's ten. So we've got fourteen. And the deck probably plays anywhere from twenty-two to twenty-four lands. Uh, I, I I'm believe. guessing twenty-four. I'm guessing twenty-four as well. He's playing the main deck Scavenger Grounds. That indicates to me that he's on the twenty-four yep. land list. Uh, so we've got fourteen mountains hiding out somewhere in that deck. He's got. Uh, Three lands on the board, what, three, four cards in hand? There's seven, ten, probably, let's say, five to six. Cards in his graveyard? Yeah, so there's 16. Uh, so 34, 14 of those are mountains. Yep. Um, he's, I mean, he's less than 50% to draw one mountain on any given single draw. Uh, far, far less than that to draw a runner, runner mountain. Absolutely. So even though he's got 14 left in his deck and, and a... You know, a, a far lower number of cards left in his library. When you look at even just the rough math, mm -hmm. you know, a runner, runner mountain here uh, is is on the low side of probability. Yep, absolutely. So he's at three now, still taking damage from his land. Clayton still putting pressure on him. I believe Clayton has a Raskus contempt in his hand. Um, so the thing, Solve Live, is I'm not moving the mic. Uh, unfortunately, these headsets that we have, occasionally the wire that runs from them will be positioned such that it rubs against the mic, and there's not a, a lot that I can do about that. Uh, the, no, not my first choice in headsets. <laughs> no, no. I, actually, I'll, I'll be honest with you. The mic is in my mouth. That's what you're hearing. <laughs> you're actually hearing my uvula. <laughs> Oh, and Jesse draws a mountain here. There we go. Okay. So there is there is hope for a game. Um, and Jesse thinking that uh, if Clayton were to have a removal spell in his hand, he were to, he would die if uh, Clayton were to remove his blocker. Just swing with that rogue refiner. The thing, the yeah, the, I don't think I like the swing. I do not I, as well. I don't like lose. I never like positioning myself to just straight up lose. To lose to a single removal spell. I agree with that. Um, no matter the format. What I do like, even though Clayton is really behind on cards here, he does have the pressure on with that rogue refiner. Block and sack. I I, I agree with that. What I'm saying is, his top decks with these large cards such as Noxious Gear Hulk, Liliana. Mm -hmm. makes it a little bit better as opposed to Jesse just drawing lands but I mean there's also the possibility that he just flies out here and there's yep. the Vraska's Contempt he indeed. would have just straight up lost indeed so making making the wise choice absolutely good on him so he at least gets to play another turn absolutely because he made the correct decision and really when you're in these kinds of situations folks your decisions should generally be informed by the lines that will allow you the most opportunities to draw your way out of the losing position. Yep. Drawing four new cards here. Yep. 
And looks as if there's uh, at least one lightning strike in there and a mountain. And a mountain, so we've got a game. So we do have a game. All right. And a rampaging ferocidon. So that rampaging ferocidon uh, when I'm at two life is probably the last thing I'm looking to put into play. No, no. <laughs> and I think he's just got to play this Earthshaker Kenra and pass, and then you know, lightning strike one of these uh, lightning strike one of these rogue refiners. Okay. Well, he chooses to play the ferocidon, so I guess we're gonna trade. We're gonna trade. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Definitely trading. Uh, lightning striking. Uh, trading, yeah, okay. I just you gotta declare that block before you play that removal spell, buddy. Otherwise, there could be a world of hurt in there. How so? So Clayton could have drawn a removal spell mm -hmm. and just been okay trading. But if Jesse goes for the removal spell prior to him blocking, then that signals to Clayton that he has something else, and Clayton could just remove the blocker and then kill him. Jesse would just two Clayton mountains. Had, that would have taken two cards. That would have taken. Clayton was on, was held back. No, no, no. I was saying at that time. Then, so Clayton had one creature. What uh -huh. I'm saying was, if if uh, yeah. Jesse goes for the removal spell prior to blocks, then oh, that yeah, yeah. Then Jesse could have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm a little bit slow. No, no, you're fine. It's okay. We'll speed you up. Well, I mean. <laughs> I'm a little bit slow, and somehow I still have conned people into allowing me to come and talk about this game. <laughs> <laughs> Clayton with an Aether Sphere Harvester and a Rogue Refiner to crew it, and that's going to be all she wrote. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so that'll do it for round two. The second of three commentated rounds here tonight at, at Wednesday Night Standard. Mm -hmm. There will be a fourth round, however, our velvety voices will not be overlaid on it. No, unfortunately not. We have jobs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that'll do it for round two. We will be back much sooner than that 23 minutes at the top of the screen would indicate. Uh, if you are digging what you're watching, maybe even digging what you're listening to, well, except for our buddy Savlive because we can't manage our microphones. Yep. Uh, feel free to jam on that subscribe button. Oh, toss us a follow. Mm -hmm. That's free. Um, but any of the proceeds that go into the stream, or actually, or you know, from donations or whatnot, go right back into the stream. This yep. is a not-for-profit venture at this point. Absolutely. So, um, you know, if you'd like to support the stream, you can subscribe. You can also hit the uh, the Patreon or whatever that is, yep. and uh, then also check out the YouTube channel, or the Facebook page, or the Instagram page. There's probably a Twitter. Um, wouldn't surprise me if uh, Top Deck Productions was on Tender at this point. It actually is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we will be back here shortly. Thanks for hanging out with us, folks. Hope you're enjoying it. See you soon. Thank you.